Transmissions jammed. Proximity coverage only. Big thanks to Ubisoft for inviting me out to Red Storm, where I got to play in the Dark Zone for a few hours, and also mess around with organized PvP. I learned quite a bit. This is going to be everything you need to know about the Dark Zones of The Division 2. Obviously, this version that I played is not the final version, so I won't be getting into the minutia of stats, balancing, or anything like that, as it can and probably will change. This isn't a review or a guide, these are my first impressions and everything you should know about the Dark Zones of The Division 2. And yes, that's Dark Zones. More on that in a minute. I'm gonna quickly catch you guys up with the basics before we go in depth. The Division 2 takes place seven months after the events of the first game. Washington, D.C. is collapsing into chaos. Civilians have banded together into settlements to survive. They're using MREs as currency. MREs! They taste horrible. Obviously, the situation is pretty dire. While I'm not allowed to show you the entire map, in fact, I'm only allowed to show you the Dark Zones that I played, the whole thing looks pretty vast. Additionally, as much as I liked the first game's map, it was primarily comprised of streets. Not only are there more entrable buildings in The Division 2, but the map of DC opens up far more varied locations than the first game could. And possibly most importantly, The Division 2 was designed with the end game first. There's also said to be robust post-launch plans as well. Anyway, let's talk about the Dark Zones. There are three Dark Zones in The Division 2 located in different areas of DC. They each have a unique layout, and that affects what strategies work best. For example, one Dark Zone may favor short range, and the other may favor long range due to the lines of sights created by the buildings. I got to play in two of the Dark Zones, Dark Zone East and Dark Zone South. There were three teams of four, and we played for a few hours. Now, I'm not just going to be talking about the new features being added, but also how some of the gameplay systems are being overhauled. If you played the first division, you probably remember the Dark Zone was pretty polarizing. Some people felt it should have been PvP focused, some felt it should have been PvE focused, others felt it just didn't have the right balance, and some were sick of getting ganked by people that spent countless hours grinding stats. And there were also hackers. The developers seem to be trying to address all of these things. We're going to go over the major changes and the new features to the Dark Zone in The Division 2. They've reworked client architecture and servers to limit the ability for data modifications, and they've improved the anti-cheat system to better identify offenders. Basically, this should hopefully stop hacking from being a thing in The Division 2. They've also added a lot more servers for better latency. A really important thing to note is that things like gear stats in Dark Zones are normalized to keep things based on skill rather than stats. Your build choices are still respected, however, so they're not going to mess around with how you choose to structure your playstyle, but through all of that, they're trying to put a bigger emphasis on people's skills rather than RNG and how much time you've spent grinding for gear. There's also no hostile VOIP in the Dark Zones. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Now, while they have reworked the Dark Zone to be less griefer-prone and to be less unforgiving, if you were someone that loved its unforgiving nature and welcomed people who made the mistake of trying to grief you, you shouldn't be disappointed because that is a focus as well. It's called Occupied Dark Zones, and it's the most intense Dark Zone experience. It's not nearly as forgiving, you can only enter these in the end game. Friendly fire is on, there is no normalization of stats or gear. There is no such thing as rogue status, and there are no rules. Another problem that people had was sponginess, and that, that's a tough thing to handle because it is a game. It can't be 100% realistic. It needs to strike a good balance between gameplay and feel. So in an effort to step away from the feeling of sponginess that a lot of people had, they've improved enemy AI. They'll try and dodge and take cover more dynamically than before, and it feels like they've made some improvements there, but I would have to spend more time with it to say for sure how improved it is. But enemy AI and health do feel better in general. Even the beefy enemies don't feel particularly spongy once you shoot their armor off. They melt pretty quick. The higher tier enemies have weak points which can be tough to hit, so you're going to want to coordinate with your team members to take them down, as it can be pretty difficult to dismantle their armor alone. Of course, we won't really know how all of this feels until you get your hands on the game and figure out the scaling. But from what I played, it feels pretty good nevertheless. It feels like a Division game, but things like movement is smoother, animations are more natural, gunplay 
feels even better somehow, and I felt it- I felt like it felt pretty good before, but a lot of core elements have changed. Things like guns and attachments, and how they work together, which I can't showcase yet, but as an example, scopes affect stats, and they're mandatory when attached, when aiming down the sights, so you can't put a scope on your gun just for the stats without actually using the scope. <laughs> which I'm sure many of you did in the first game. I know I did. When the crisis hit, I volunteered to help set up the quarantine. The team primarily consisted of first responders. Everyone just wanted to help out. We were guarding the supply depot. Countless vaults concealed the contaminated dead, and the containers filled with DC-62. I was lucky. The Dark Zones have story missions, which serve as your introduction to them and some of their mechanics. As with the first game, in the Dark Zones, some loot, like the loot you get off of enemies or in containers, is shared loot, meaning it's first come, first serve, which is gonna be a bitch in occupied Dark Zones with friendly fire on. The Dark Zone is now PvEVP, player versus environment versus player, and a major part of the Dark Zone being seamlessly PvEVP and feeling significantly less gank prone is how they've changed the rogue system. There's three main levels, rogue, disavowed rogue, and then there's manhunt status. Conducting rogue activities like theft or PvE will turn you rogue. Killing another player will turn you into a disavowed rogue. Your agent status is disavowed. If you kill enough agents, you enter manhunt status. Rogue isn't just PvP anymore, it's also PvE. So, this is a new rogue loop that they've structured around greed and theft, where you can hijack extractions or steal dark zone drops. Or you can pick locked crates, hack into terminals to triangulate the location of the thieves' den, where a sketchy guy trades loot for MREs. Nobody's got better gear in DC. Nobody. Look at those sunglasses. Look at those sunglasses. How? Can you doubt him? How can you doubt this man? What gear that you have to trade for MREs could be anything but top tier? So there's a bunch of different ways to earn Dark Zone XP and Dark Zone loot, either via missions, landmarks, PvP, or PvE, with some of these being rogue actions. Something I think is pretty important is that it's much more unlikely for someone defending themselves against rogue players to be marked as rogue themselves. It's a smarter rogue system overall. But if if some of those things were exactly what you liked about it, the risk, the rush, then you're still in luck because you have occupied dark zones for all of that brutal, unforgiving chaos. The footage you've been seeing is from an Xbox One X. The pre-release build that I played was at native 4K, 60 FPS, and it looked really good. I'm really liking the map and the graphics so far. DC in the summer has quite the different feel from New York City in the winter, but foliage is really dense, it looks natural, the general layout of the city and its buildings, it, it gives it not only a really different feel, but also a different approach to the strategies you'll be taking. As much as I liked the first game's map, it did largely feel like corridors. Visually, I really like the day and night cycle. It has an excellent ambiance. The nights could have been darker, but again, you have that realism versus fun factor struggle. It's tough. With the design of the open world being more varied than the first game, it opens up more possibilities for variety in combat. Combat is a little more vertical than it was before. It's, it's less of the giant corridor design that the first game had, where most of the buildings made the map fairly consistent. Something I respected about The Division 1 was how in-depth the PC UI settings were and how in-depth the graphics settings were, and that's something that's returning in The Division 2. This is not a PC port. The PC version of this game was built for PC. You've got ultra-wide monitor support, high hertz support, of course. This is a, a version that's built for power users. And additionally, you've, uh, you've got all of those fixes to prevent hackers, so hopefully hackers aren't going to be a thing and the PC version's going to be awesome. So, I appreciate that.
We also played organized 4v4 PvP, also known as Conflict, and the maps in this mode are built from the ground up for this mode. So you're going to be fighting in the parts of DC that you don't see in the open world, and I, I really like that. I think that that's fantastic. Building maps specifically for this mode, instead of taking sections from the open world and adapting them to this mode, makes for far better balancing. Like Dark Zones, gear in conflict is normalized. There's also dedicated progression for conflict. We played Skirmish on Georgetown and Domination on Capital Ruins, and I actually enjoyed myself. I, I like conflict. I really enjoyed how vertical the maps could be. I had a blast playing Skirmish. I really liked Georgetown and Skirmish in particular. I feel like the general layout of these maps were pretty good, but there are some things that should be tweaked as far as balancing is concerned. However, that's something that they were already working on fixing because this was an early build that I played, so it's still in development. Clans are a bigger thing than they were before. There's clan progression now, where you can earn clan XP to unlock rewards. You can communicate with your clan in-game through clan chat, direct messaging, and bulletin boards. There's also clan leaderboards with a bunch of different avenues for competition as well. So that's pretty cool. This feels like a game that the developers are really putting a lot of effort into. At first glance, it's easy to see something like The Division 2 with its grounded setting and think, that doesn't look that different. It's a different city in a different season, and human beings are shooting each other. But they really have made a lot of changes to how the game plays fundamentally. Sure, there's what you would assume, there's new abilities, new guns, new attachments, but they've also changed the mechanics of how those things are implemented to better suit the gameplay. They're not saying, the Division 1, this is the best we can do. So we're gonna do it again, but add some new gear and weapons. Instead, they're using this sequel as an opportunity to overhaul systems that just didn't work that well the first time around, which is great. They're not just carrying over what they fixed with the first game. The Division 1 had some issues at launch, but the developers fixed those issues with relentless updates, and I respect that. But they're not just carrying everything over. They're making core changes to how the Division fundamentally plays, and I think that's great. I haven't played the whole game, obviously. I haven't really played much. Honestly, when you think about it, two to three hours in comparison to the length of the, the Division 2 and the scope of a game like this is not a lot. But from what I've played, and from what the developers have discussed, I hope that this really could be something special, and I'm crossing my fingers that it could potentially be the best multiplayer game of 2019, and I really genuinely hope that the final game could live up to that because I've had a lot of fun so far. In any case, this has been The Division 2. I'd like to give a huge thanks to Ubisoft for inviting me out to play this game. I'm, I'm going to make more videos on The Division 2 as well, so keep an eye out for that. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for the future videos as well. But until next time, stay frosty, agents. I'll see you in D.C. Where are the uh, players? Where'd they go? They're all here. Oh god. Oh, <laughs> oh they're right behind this cover. Teammate down. Down. I'm crawling to the back of the room. They're they're outside the windows on the left side. He's down. There's another one out there. Coming in from a different angle. Oh yeah, they're all they're spread out. You've been disavowed. Okay, yeah, I got one down also. Watch out. 
There's a radius here for something, Charlie. Detecting landmark. The radius. Oh my god, another one's down. Jesus, you should see all the bullet holes on your I shield. Think there's more guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that shield is. I got a that's guy pretty on useful. Me. That shield is nice. On Are my you way. Using? He's down. Finish him. Okay. Extraction called. Hilo on the way. Extraction called. Hilo on the way. Hilo almost at extraction now. Extraction called. Hilo on the way. Hilo is on site. Waiting for pickup. Wait, there's a player. He's, uh... Uh... Up above? Shit. He's up above. Yep, up above, up above. Two of them. Whew. That's a big explosion. DZ right dropped by an allied oh, agent. My. I'll try to flank him. Still two more up here. Okay. He's down. I'm chasing him. Cargo strike. Get us all behind you, Bravo. Oh, we got a cargo loaded. Ready to go. Oh no. Hilo is headed back. What is here? Loading done. Let's get it. Ready to leave. Hunting us down. <laughs> Yeah, they're here. Serious where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Upstairs where I am. We need you, Charlie. We need you back. That's okay. nice. We all need you. Ready? Ready? You ready? Ready. Shields out. <laughs> Alright, I increased it. 